The sky teaches us where we come from. I mean, we're all made of stardust. Everything on Earth is actually made out of stars. We are part of the heavens. Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days. My name's Ava Saltberger. We're here in Springfield, Vermont, for the 75th annual Stellafane Convention. Hey, you want to look at the moon? The birth of stars. And I see Saturn for the first time. The remains of the death of stars. You get the first really crisp view of craters on the moon. You're looking at the real things. Just to get out and see, see the universe. Like, wow, so there's things up there with names. It's all there. It's all up in the sky. And when you start looking through and you really peer deeply into it, you almost feel like you're in outer space yourself. Stellafane means shrine to the stars, and they have been having conventions here on this hilltop since the 1920s. I've come to Stellafane probably for about 30 years now. 13 years? I think this is my ninth convention. I've been coming to Stellafane for six years. In 1955 is the first year I came. So I say 1960. Since 84? Since 1989. My stepfather has been coming up since he was about 16. Well, this is my second year at Stellafane. This is the one where you see the most beautiful telescopes and have the most knowledgeable people. Place to get together and for amateur telescope makers to uh, share their ideas. So I get ideas, I take them back to my club, and they get the ideas. I've gotten a lot of help and a lot of tips on what to do and how to do it. The people are inspiring, the ingenuity is inspiring. It's not only a convention, it's also a state of mind. Crazy like you about uh, astronomy, you know. You come here and everybody's everybody's weird in a good way. We're all, we all get it. It's incredible the amount of knowledge that the club has in general and that people coming up here have. Last year they treated me like an old lost son. <laughs> I'm not a son anymore, you know. A lot of people have mentioned how they started here as youngsters and how it stimulated them to go into the astronomical field. And it inspired me to go out to Arizona and pursue a career in astronomy education. It really has a special place in all of our hearts. So some people discover it later in life. Others, it's inside. My father was a telescope maker. And so when I was six years old, he gave me my first telescope. I think initially I was uh, eight or nine years old, walking, you know, taking an evening walk with my dad. I would go look at outside at like two in the morning with my dad. And, and I would just lie there and look at the heavens like you saw them last night. Being able to navigate the night has just always been I guess kind of a romantic idea. I think that once you catch the astronomy bug, it never lets go of you. They started a tradition in the mid-20s of getting together on this hill every summer. And this property was donated by Russell Porter to begin with. So that was the start of the Springfield Telescope Makers Club. Science fiction, War of the Worlds, I mean, all these things were happening way back then. They built their own telescopes. They were primarily a bunch of machinists down there in the machine tool industry. Hey, how would you like to learn how to work with glass and make optics and work to a precision of a few millionths of an inch? I kind of go back to what Russell Porter was, which was the poor man's telescope. Back then, there wasn't anything really available commercially unless you were a millionaire nearly. There's a lot of neat historical connections to this little place in the cloudy you know, hills of southern Vermont. This is also where the amateur telescope making movement started in the United States. They inspired everyone else. I'm uh, looking only through a telescope that uh, I made. You know, this is uh, the beauty of it. Well, I can tell you from top to bottom, it's completely homemade top to bottom. It's a 6.3 inch Apocomat oil triplet. This is a Newtonian telescope on an equatorial mount. I'm on my way to building a truss tube 10 inch uh, F5 telescope. So I tried to meld my two, two of my biggest interests baking and telescope making. This telescope here, which has been made, you know, out of cans. If you want to see telescopes I've made over the years, it's there's at least 24, maybe 28. I've not counted them. For me, it's the craftsmanship. For me, it's the design, the engineering, the craftsmanship, the precision of the optics. Can you see the mirror in there? It's all done with mirrors. I got a mirror kit for my 10th birthday, finished it on my 17th birthday, and put it into a into a telescope just before my 18th birthday. <laughs> what will be the mirror? Um, and this becomes more and more convex and this becomes more and more concave. The light comes in, hits the mirror, 
bounces outside the eyepiece. The larger the telescope, the more light it gathers and the dimmer the object you can look at and the higher the resolution, the sharper the details that you can see. I learned about telescope making and actually how to make the things you, you want to observe the sky. Around here, it's telephone, the skies are nice and dark. You get to see through uh, lots of people's scopes, uh, galaxies and star clusters and nebulas. And people will call out the objects that they're looking at. What they see and people will turn to, uh, other telescopes will turn to look at it. We looked at Jupiter last night and there's Jupiter with these very faint bands on it. Oh heaven, some people, uh, they'll stay all night, they'll be up all night. Archaeologists have shown that the moon is probably the first object human cultures looked at. There are lunar calendars that go back to the Ice Age. First time I saw Saturn, I'll tell you, that kind of blows most everybody away when they see that. See globular clusters, nebula, galaxies double stars. Interesting objects like quasars, which are really bright, probably black holes shining at the very beginning of the universe. The burnt out embers of stars called white dwarfs to exotic variable things on their way to becoming huge supernova explosions. You name it, in the universe. The universe is so much bigger than us, so much bigger than our daily problems. This is a projected image of the sun, and there's a sunspot there. That is about as big as the Earth. That little speck. Yeah, that little speck is probably as big as the Earth. So getting outside and seeing how tiny we are in the big picture, it's made me more appreciative of eternal grandeur. just stardust. We'll get stuck out with you again real soon. We are actually in the middle. We are very small compared to the cosmic scales, but very large, obviously compared to an ant. Wherever you are in life, like I say, don't compare yourself to others. Make your own happiness. So this is me making my own happiness.